Hi, my name is Randall Loy and I wanted to welcome you back to the Infertility Channel. I'm an infertility specialist in Central Florida and you have 12 shopping days left before Christmas. So you could be at the mall, but I'm really appreciative that you're here with me. I'd like to start with a little Christmas story. A few years ago, I had a patient who loved Christmas and she came to me and she said, you know, my husband and I would like to perfectly time the insemination such that we can have a daughter born on the 24th or the 25th of December, we'd like to use the name Noel. And I said, well, what if you have a son? And she said, well, we'll still call him Noel. That's fine. But the story continues. She did get pregnant, but she did not get pregnant until July and she had an April baby. And I'm hoping that she named him or her April or May. Today, we're gonna to be talking about scar tissue formation after gynecologic surgery. But before we get into that, I'd like to read a question from a viewer in Minnesota. Dear Dr. Randall, when I was age five, I had an appendectomy. My appendix ruptured. Could this be related to my present infertility? That's a perfect, perfect segue because the answer quite simply is yes. Now, we know that previous surgery causes scar tissue. That's just part of the deal. If you have surgery inside of the abdomen, they're scarring. Now we know that about 90 plus percent of the cases, whether laparotomy, a big surgical incision, or the keyhole belly button laparoscopic incision, leads to problems with scarring. The inside of the abdomen is lined by a special layer. It's called the peritoneum. The peritoneum is this very thin layer. It's like Teflon. It allows things to slip and slide on one another so the bowel doesn't get stuck to other bowel loops. Anyway, so the peritoneum is very distinctly different from other tissues. You know, if you cut your skin, the skin heals from the edges inward, kind of centripetal healing. The peritoneum, however, heals from the bottom up at all points simultaneous. And it heals very rapidly so that if we do something inside of the belly, that scarring starts off in several hours with a, a clot like, it's called a fibrin clot, and that can then have the ingrowth of blood vessels. And the whole process takes maybe 12 to 16 weeks. But if it heals normally without scarring, we can go back in seven or eight days and see nothing, essentially no defect. So it's dramatic healing if it heals well. So if it does not heal well, that scar can mature and things can get stuck together that shouldn't be. The ovaries can get stuck up on the sidewalls, the ovaries and the tubes can get stuck together, a bowel loop can get stuck to the back of the uterus. In short, scar tissue then can lead to infertility and can lead to pain. Up to 5%, 5% of patients who have scar tissue inside of the peritoneal cavity, inside of the belly, can have small bowel obstruction where the bowel basically blocks off just because of the scarring. And up to one third of patients with pelvic or abdominal scarring will be readmitted to hospital for treatment of the scarring. So in reproductive medicine, anytime we perform laparoscopy, the belly button surgery, or larger incisions, we try to prevent scarring. We use adjuncts. And there have been efforts used to put some saline solution inside the belly to keep things floating on one another. That doesn't seem to work. No matter how much is used, even a couple of liters doesn't seem to help. There is a new solution though called icodextrin. It's a polymer, it's a bunch of glucose molecules stuck together, sugar molecules, and that seems to absorb more slowly, allowing for so-called hydroflotation, allows the bowel and the uterus and the tubes and the ovaries to kind of float around for a few days, typically absorbed about five days later. So that prevents scarring from happening. Another one that's tried and true and has been around for about 30 years at this point is called Interseed. Now, Interseed is a Johnson & Johnson product and it is a specially formulated cellulose. Cellulose is the ubiquitous plant fiber. It's the, the stuff that gives plants their structure or the skeleton of plants. So cellulose can be especially processed such that it forms a nice scar prevention barrier. It can be put on top of the uterus, over the tubes, the ovaries. As long as there's not a lot of blood around, this turns into a jelly band-aid a few hours after surgery. And then that jelly band-aid absorbs completely in about two weeks, preventing scarring. In some of the original studies, it decreased new and recurrent scar formation in as much as 70 to 
The final type of scar prevention barrier we use is called Seprafilm. It is very fragile and it is used in open cases especially, but it can be used where there is a little bit of oozing. For example, if there's been a little bit of bleeding around, we know that the interseed will not work, but Seprafilm does work. It also forms a kind of Teflon band-aid, a gel-like band-aid over the surfaces. Uh, so one that's available in Europe but not in the United States is called spray gel. You can spray this stuff on the surfaces where you've just operated and it forms a jelly band-aid once again. And it's called PEG or polyethylene glycol, a very slippery substance. I do need to tell you that none of these has been definitely proven in large studies to improve fertility. Although we do know surgeries where one goes back in and cuts scar tissue, for example, between the tubes and the ovaries or releasing the tubes from the sidewalls, do seem to help. So there is definitely a link between scar tissue and fertility. I need to tell you a story about a woman who was referred to me for surgery. She had had previous surgery and it was thought that she had scarring inside, so she was asked to see me for laparoscopy. Now I should tell you that this woman did not speak English as a first language. In fact, I'm not sure she spoke much English at all. I was reviewing her intake history and the place where one could put male or female by sex, she put yes. And when we asked her blood type, she put red. And when the form asked how many sexual partners she had had in the previous two years, she put one per week. And finally, when asked about the number of times she had had intercourse per week, she put 52. So that is one very, very busy lady. I hope she uh, has time to shop in this Christmas season. I hope you do as well. And I want to wish you a joyous holiday season. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. See you back next week. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.